Hi. Hello, Laurie, how are you? Very good, thank you. I'm just at the rehearsal room here, you can see. Cool. Just finished the rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> Rehearsing the new songs already? Yeah, rehearsing, getting ready for the tour. Uh, we have some uh, acoustic performances coming this week. So we're just like trying to practice a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good. And, uh, you know, how long have you guys been working on this new record, Rise? Uh, how long? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been a, quite a long time. I think like three years or more. We started before COVID. Uh, we had a couple of sessions in Spain. We rented uh, this villa on the mountains. It was really nice, actually, to go together in a in a house. We we set all the instruments in the living room, and then we had this nice view over the the city and and the treetops. It was very <laughs> nice. We we wrote a couple of songs there and just like having this sort of band camp hanging out together and and that's how we started writing the songs but then we were planning to go to studio in 2020 and then covid started and everything had to be canceled we had all these plans to go to england and a studio was booked and everything and then it got difficult because we we still wanted to continue working instead of like waiting because nobody knew how long it's gonna take yeah with the pandemic so we started working online having this software that we could send files and all hear it at the same time and it it was very difficult and it was very um felt so bad because we believe in the you know the instant spontaneous things that happen when you are in the room together and jamming things and trying out different things and that energy and that chemistry. So on the laptop screen, you don't have it, you know, it's, <laughs> it's even difficult to talk to each other. <laughs> and then if you have to create music like that, it's like, it's like a nightmare. But um, anyway, we tried and it was very slow. We, like all of us, we recorded stuff at home or in different cities because we live in different parts of the world. I live in Hawaii. Ero, the bass player, he lives in Australia. Uh, two of the guys uh, lived in Helsinki. The producer was in England. So we were like all over the planet uh, with different time zones and <laughs> it was a big mess. But... But we got stuff done. Like I recorded some of my uh, parts in my car. I would drive up on the mountain, for example, one day, and I had a beautiful view over uh, Honolulu, you know, the city and the ocean. I would sing inside my car um, these songs, and it felt really great because it was pretty inspiring and and something new. But still, I felt kind of lonely. And it's nice to get feedbacks from feedback from your f uh, friends, you know, yeah. like, so it was like, I would record something and then I send it over to them. And then I had to wait till the next morning when I hear something and it's like, they were like, oh, that was okay. <laughs> like what? <laughs> you know, like, it's like so slow. Like, no, I didn't really mean that. I meant like, try this chord and like, Simple things like that took like days to fix. So that was bad. But some of it was good. Like some of the things we recorded on our own somehow maybe became like somehow you feel the loneliness and that emotion in it. Like at least I want to believe so. Yeah. Like I, I was recording this one song in a empty movie theater in Hawaii in our building there's uh, like a movie theater so I would stand in the middle of the room have my microphone there and just like all by myself and singing this song it felt very great you know and 
So some some parts of it was good, but it was difficult, and mm. and the, at the end, actually it drove us to a point where we almost broke up with the band. We started having arguments and fights. I think because of the situation, but also there were like deeper um, problems where a little bit deeper. The guitarist Pauli he left the band, and I think he had. He had been doing that for quite a while, like for years already, but now it was just the right time for him to jump off the train. Yeah. And, and that was a shitty moment because we, we had been together for ages. You know, we were the ones who put the band together in, in 94 and, and all of a sudden he's gone. But um, it was pretty obvious that the rest of us, we really wanted to continue and, even more than ever, like start working hard for the new record. And so we found this new guitarist, Empu. She joined us in September last year. And uh, after she came in, a lot of uh, great things started to happen. And um, we wrote a bunch of good songs and all of a sudden the, the mood changed like yeah. <laughs> 100%. And, and everything is like everyone is like super excited and happy about the new future of the of the band. Yeah, you know sometimes sometimes you just need that um, new uh, you know band member or uh, a new energy to yeah. you know to change. Like if your focus is still on the band, and if there's someone that's not happy, you know, it, for uh, it's like a relationship anyway. It it might yes. be hard. You still care for the person, but. It's not working, you know, it's probably better that people just go separate ways and, you know, remain right. friends and instead of arguing all the time, it's just... Yes, <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's, it felt like a right thing to do. But uh, it was hard because we are friends and, you yeah. know, we wanted him to make the decision. It was him. He, yeah. he said, like, I'm going to leave. I want to make space for you guys to grow the new directions and he felt like he was like he was the brakes like he was like holding back yeah. of things and like you know yeah it's you know and i think covid in many regards put things in perspective for a lot of people you know and what we thought was important became irrelevant and we had to focus on other things happen with me i think happened with everyone then realize you know work is fine you know pays the bills and everything but it's not everything you know yes. there's more important things in your life that you need to pay more attention and uh you know be there more than just work at the end of the day when you finish work or if you get fired or you just leave, the only thing you, you'll get is a pat in the back and saying thank you if you even get that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but that, that is, a, if, if you think of the positive things that COVID brought with it, I think, you know, things like that or people got to spend more time with their families and we were not able to travel and... Um, well, that was kind of good timing because I also, I got a baby, you know, uh, we got a kid. So like I would actually be at home for once because I'm always traveling, yeah. always on the tour and everything. So that was a very precious time too and important. Yeah. It's totally important to see the kids grow. I don't have kids. I have nephews, but you know, during those two years that I haven't seen them, you know, after I visit them again, it was a massive change, you know, two years, yeah. even though you can FaceTime and all that stuff. But, you know, being there and being with them, it's a different thing than just being on the phone and just saying, I, yes. it's very different. Anyway, and for the title track, you work with Desmond Child, which, you know, legendary, you know, songwriter, producer. Uh, how was to work with him? You know, I... Well, I know a lot of songs written by Desmond Child, and they're also freaking good. How was for you, especially, to work with uh, Desmond? Well, I've I've known his work for a long time. Like even before I knew him, or I didn't even know that he's behind the songs. I was listening to his music, songs like "I Was Made for Loving You," 
Heavens on Fire from Kiss. Yeah. You know, yeah. those must be the first rock songs I ever heard. Then came Poison for Alice Cooper. I was about 10 years old. It was like massive thing in my life. I I loved that song from the first moment I had Alice Cooper's poster on my wall. It's like I still think it's one of the greatest rock songs and I wish I had wrote, written that myself <laughs> and then later on like all these songs like Living on a Prayer whatever you know like so many good songs so I learned from Desmond how to write songs because I was carefully studying all the songs and like and sucking all the influence I could ever possibly get from out of his songs and then we wrote In the Shadows 2003 and that song reached reached him so it was like a beautiful thing that the music made like a full circle yeah. maybe he heard himself in that song i don't know but you know like he heard that song and then he contacted me like telling me that oh i love your band and i would love to work with you and I'm like oh my god <laughs> this must be a joke or something <laughs> i i didn't believe that it was him because i don't know where he got my email and you know it was like a mystery. But anyway, we ended up working together already like 15 years ago, yeah. first time. And uh, now I, I got back to him after, oh, like uh, at the end of COVID, when the guitarist guy was leaving us, and I was really desperate. Like I said, I thought like, oh, I got to call Desmond, you know, maybe he has something for me. And then I said like, listen, I have this song idea that I think we should write together. It was Jezebel, the song we... Eurovision. Uh, Eurovision song. So I had this like an early demo and I, I flew to Greece to meet him. He was there having his family uh, vacation. And I, I went there for two or three days and we wrote this song and Rise too was the other song. And uh, before we wrote anything, before we even touched the instruments or saying anything i was just actually literally lying on the sofa like i was in a therapy session <laughs> and he was writing down things making notes i was telling everything about my life that sucked uh, and how i felt like anxious and angry and whatever all my emotions and he was writing down shit and then and that's how we got started and it was very purifying uh, cause he is a very, um, he like, um, well, I, I admire him and I respect him so much. And, you know, the fact that he wants to write a song with me to cheer me up, you know, we, we decided to write prize to sort of, um, be the medicine for this moment, yeah. be the cure. And it was such a beautiful thing, like for that song. Uh, uh, I put a lot of that bad feeling and yeah. that emotion and and uh, it's very nice to now sing the song that now that I got over these things I still remember very strongly and and um, it's good um, I really personally I, I kind of that song is written for me yeah. <laughs> to save my ass. <laughs> and it's a very uplifting song, anyway. You know, rise up. It's you know, it's. I think we all need to hear that once in a while. You know, someone. Yeah. You know, when we're feeling a bit down. You know, sometimes I like when I'm when I'm a bit down. I just want people to listen. You know, when I'm, you know, going through stuff, you know, I don't want people to tell me anything. I just want them to listen to what I'm feeling. And there's yeah. people that jump right away and say, oh, no, no, it's no, you'll be OK. You know, it's like, shut up. You know, <laughs> let me yeah. just let me just tell you what I'm feeling and then just, you know, don't say anything. But sometimes on the other end, it's good to have someone to say, you know, Okay, get on your ass, you know, just get up and do shit because, you know, it's, you know, stop being sorry about yourself. Yeah, like Desmond said, like, I went to see him and I was telling him, like, I'm so sick of this band. I think I'm going to go and do a solo album. And then he said, like, like, he said, come on, shut up. If you go solo... Nobody gives a fuck. 
<laughs> you have to continue with the Rasmus. And like, okay, whatever you say, sir. <laughs> it was great. And, you know, Jezebel on the Eurovision was, you know, a pleasant surprise. You know, I tend to follow the Eurovision, you know, as much as possible when Portugal, you know, organized and won, won and then organized the event. I was working there on Eurovision because I work for RTP, which is the public broadcaster. And um, seeing, you know, the rehearsals and everything that goes behind the scenes to make that TV show, you know, what we see on TV, it's an amazing experience. You know, we might not like all the songs that are there or anything, but the work, the professionalism that's put into it, it's, you know, I think only when you are there and doing it, we realize, you know, how much goes into. How was for you that, and for the band, that experience to be on Eurovision as well? Because it's something, I think it's something special to do anyway. Like it or not, you know, the music and whatever, I think it's uh, one of a lifetime experience to do it. Yes, it was amazing. And I think it was really something we needed as a new lineup with a new guitarist, All of a sudden, we have a new song. We have a new challenge to overcome something to conquer together as a new band. So that was very good timing for us. After COVID, you know, like we were so hungry just to play anything. And uh, and this was a great chance. And also, it was something new that we haven't done in the history of the band. So there was a lot of uh, new things we learned. Like, like for example... For the first time, I got voice lessons, singing lessons, because it was available in in the. Actually, first we had this uh, national finals in Finland, so we had to win first. Yeah, here in Finland, to be the representative. So, but you know, like, and like work with all these talented uh, choreographers, uh, light designers, whatever you know. It was amazing opportunity to develop our band and uh, learn new things. So I think it was a good uh, start for the new Rasmus to have something solid like that. And uh, our goal was to be in uh, Torino at the finals, and we got it. You know, it was very good, like to have this long term plan. Okay, in one year. We have to be there in in May 2020. You know, one we uh, 22. We have to be in Italy, and and that that's what happened. So it was it was just a perfect thing, and I really enjoyed being there with other European artists, and uh, sort of especially when the Ukrainian, you know, invasion is happening. The war is in Europe. And all these bands come together, all, all the acts come together. It felt very meaning, meaningful and and strong that Europe stands united. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, Eurovision is great and I think gives a lot of experience to artists because, you know, when I was, you know, assisting the or watching the rehearsals, you know, the camera work, the position that you have to be and you know in these cards or <laughs> in this note you have to look this way <laughs> and you know all the de the little details you know for for someone that likes you know that world the tv world and you know all that broadcasting thing i think it was something you know absolutely wonderful to to be part of because you know we might not think You know, rock and roll, it's great. But, you know, you talked about Kiss. I love Kiss, you know, and I'm wearing a Kiss t-shirt. <laughs> <Anyway. laughs> and, you know, the poses and everything are important because it works along with the light people. And, you know, because if you miss a spot, if you're doing a pose in a, where the solo spot is not following you, you're going to screw everything. <laughs> yeah. And the work that's put into it, it's great. And uh, you talked about uh, In the Shadows. And, you know, I was just thinking it was released 19 years ago. 
You know. I know. Where did yeah. time go by? You know what's I happening. Don't know. <laughs> That is crazy. In 19 years ago, and you know, I was looking on YouTube, and it, it's the the video itself is almost like a hundred million views or something. You know, it's 97 million views, which is, you know, can you imagine <laughs> how many people watch that video? And you know, it's how does it feel, you know, to have a song that you know it's such a hit, and after all these years. People still care about it and remember it fondly. Well, it is. It's it's absolutely great to have have a hit song like that. I mean, a lot of people ask us, like, "Are you tired of playing that song?" And I'm like, "No." <laughs> like every time we play that song, people go nuts. You know, it's it's the best part of the show. Uh, And I, I, if we wouldn't play the song, I think people would just want their money back and <laughs> be very pissed off. So it, it's great. And also what what kind of effect that song has had on us, it's like it was the key song to open all the doors to all these countries we've played um, ever since and still touring. Like it was um, a game changer. You know, we have played in, 67 countries or something and uh, it was huge like i don't know if we can ever have a hit like that again yeah probably probably not <laughs> you know so i'm really happy about that song and now that we have um, we are releasing a book today uh this week sorry the first of september about the history of the band and And of course, that song is a big part of the history. I mean, it's like, it was amazing. Like we toured in the most special places in the world. We played concerts in like, you know, Taiwan or Kuala Lumpur or, you know, like India, like all these like of special places at the edge of the world. And uh, it was amazing. I'm really happy. Uh, grateful for that song, of yeah. course. And, and I think it's nice when you get uh, when you get people that uh, come to you and say how much that song meant to them. You know, it's I, I think you know, hit or not, if you have one person that comes to you and say that that song changed their lives and helped them, I think you achieved your goal as a musician and as a songwriter. Of course, that is the the biggest compliment really what you just said it's very important and and like myself as a music consumer i don't usually like the hit songs i have found my own special songs from artists that i love more and somehow i feel those more personally and uh, it's just the um, music is so powerful it can really help you in different parts of your life and all those stories that we heard you know with people struggling with cancer and like how they got strength from our song you know i don't know it's just like amazing and then you know they have beautiful stories and memories and we have played in a big role in many people's lives people have grown up listening to our band like their whole life and we still have these fans who come to the concerts who were there 20 you know 25 years ago like it's really amazing yeah it's a i think it's a great you know as a as an artist that's probably all you know you want at the end of the day it's uh you know to have people that you know after 25 years they're there again and still enjoying the music you make and rise you know i listen to the record and there's a lot of belters there on the album and you know it's it's hard to pick i i think you guys have um, found the, the art of writing great songs because the album is full of them and uh, and i think I, i think it's going to be a special record i don't know if the eurovision is going to help 
help you know more or not but uh, i think there's a new generation of fans that uh, are going to be Rasmus fans now after they listen to the record because there's some great stuff in there and uh, you oh, know thank you you know because you know i I listened to the single Rise, great, you know, heavy song, you know, I love it, and Jezebel, obviously, but then you listen to the record and there's so many great moments there that, um, mm. you know, I think, I don't know, I might be wrong, <laughs> maybe I'm not, but there's, you know, I think it's going to be a great, great record for, for fans and, uh, you know, I do hope you guys come, come to Portugal. I know you guys have a European tour in October, but no Portugal yet, so uh, what are the plans now? You know, you have this tour, you've, you talked about the acoustic shows you guys are going to do first, so what are the plans for the end of this year and for next? Next year uh yeah for this year we have we have the tour in october and, and then we go to mexico and then that's about it for this year and then we're planning to do a lot more shows next year uh i think starting like early spring maybe march and do more latin america first uh maybe us and then do more gigs in europe so i really hope to come to portugal too i uh, i can't even remember when was the last time honestly <laughs> and that's that's not good no it's been a long time <laughs> yeah but i i i wish we could go there yeah. and uh and, but we are working hard uh, to putting up new gates and and new tours and everything. We really want to focus on touring next year, and uh, that's like the main main thing we we are focusing on. Yeah, and uh, you know, do you feel you know with your vision and everything that um, you know life is going to be a bit different now for the Rasmus, or it's going to you know follow the the same path? Do you think the particip participation in Eurovision is going to have a positive impact in the band? Well, I think uh, well, it's a big show. It's the biggest gig you can play. It's about 200 million people <laughs> watching you. So it's like, it sure has an impact. And I think uh, uh, for a lot of people, it's a kind of a reminder of us. Like, whoa, those guys still exist? Like, I used to listen to them when I was, you know, 15. And now it's been like 20 years, like you said. And a lot of people are just like, uh, come back to us like, they haven't been following, you know, maybe they had something else. They worked, they made their career, they had kids, blah, 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 you know, stuff. And then now they're like, wow. And also, like you mentioned, the younger uh, generation, we've experienced that a lot to like, um, like uh, young, younger people have discovered our band. And I think it's pretty interesting for them if, if they never heard of us, And then they go to, you know, Spotify and all of a sudden there's like 10 albums of music. It's like, wow. And if they become fans, it's a great thing to have, like a lot of music to listen to. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a phenomenon called Stranger Things that uh, made, you know, old artists cool again, <laughs> like Kate yeah. Bush. How do, you, how do you see that phenomenon? I think it's, uh, you know, personally, I think it's great to see, uh, you know, I love Kate Bush and to see her back in the charts and uh, the kids talking about, you know, running up that hill. And for me, I was like, you know, I'm more a Babushka fan, but, you know, whatever. I think it's great. How do, how do you see that phenomenon of, you know, a TV series uh, making, you know, classic artists relevant again? Yeah, it's, it is great. I mean, if it's in the right uh, context, like I heard Master of Puppets, was it, Was it in Stranger Things too? Yeah, it was. What you know, like how great song that is. It's like a masterpiece. It's like a, it's so like a amazing song with all different parts and moods. So like, I would, 
I would want to play to every teenager nowadays, like, listen to this. <laughs> but if I would do it, I mean, it has to come in the right way. Otherwise, it's not good, you know, like yeah. if some when I was 15 and someone would play me music from the 70s, I would be like, oh, I want to listen to Rage Against the Machine and shut up, you old fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I think people, when, when, when it's in the right place, in a good uh, mood, like Stranger Things, like how they created this feeling in the series, I think it's it's just perfect and and they buy it, you know. Yeah. And I think it's great that those songs are not forgotten, you know. For me, at least that song, Master of Puppets, has been very, very, very important song. We played that before we started with the Rasmus. I played guitar in this band and you know. Yeah. So yeah. I'm I'm happy for them. <laughs> Maybe one of our songs get to be on that tune. Yeah, we they they have to they have to move to the early two thousands probably to bring those yeah. dates. <laughs> but maybe in like ten years from now they start playing these old songs from two thousand and three. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Laurie, thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, great new record, Rise. You know, I'm anxiously waiting for everybody to listen to it. Uh, as I said, a lot of belters there on that record that uh, I think fans are going to enjoy a lot. So, uh, you know, hopefully, and fingers crossed, for you guys to return to Portugal maybe next year, you know, maybe in a festival or something, because sometimes it's easier yeah. to happen that way. Anyway, so uh, thank you very much for your time, you know, all the best for the European Tour in October, and uh, hope to see you soon, all right? Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.